Nein, Get those nerds! Nerds! Nerd! <laughs> and there it is. Good morning, everybody. Works every time. It is a uh, Tuesday morning edition of the Bid Nerds. Welcome. Uh, my name is John Polnick. Uh, I'm coming to you live from Las Vegas, uh, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, who's coming to you from San Francisco. This is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids. Bring a trailer. P car market, uh, rad Hemings. for sale, Hemmings, you Hemings name it. Today. If yep. you have an auction that you pulled out of your butt and just threw it up on the internet, like it seems like everyone else is doing, yep. if you've got an interesting car on there, maybe we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah. Michael Deeb, you always start the show with your little, like, you know, we are the champions thing, and usually you're getting obliterated. But mm -hmm. yesterday you had a day. What we do on yeah. the show is we talk about these cars and we make predictions, and yesterday's predictions, uh, I don't know if anyone has ever done better mm -hmm. on any single day in bid nerd history. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Blew it I, apart. I was hoping you'd ask me to gloat over. I mean, go mm. over the results from right. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But um, we got to do a short know, here, show. We got to do a yeah. short show. So move it along. Let's go. Yeah. Here's the thing, JP. I it, it, it was it was a complete washout. So uh, what was our star car yesterday? Uh, it, was it was the, the BMW. BMW. Yeah, yeah, the one the that I just nerd turned it all over. Wow. I know it's crazy, and yet uh, you bet high on it. So I said one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars for this black on black. You know, kind of a few miles, 850 CSI with a manual transmission. These cars have been doing really well. Uh, but I guess most of these cars are more original and lower miles because uh, while I guessed 113,000, you guessed 118, this car stalled out after the show, did not get any more bids, and just sold for $91,000. So, because we nerd turned it all over it and made fun of the guy, the way the guy that. drove. I mean, that video where the guy that was that owned oh, this car driving was, bad. was so, so bad, embarrassed. I was just embarrassed. Oh, embarrassed. Where I was like, Ugh, yeah, cringeworthy. What are you doing, dude? Yeah, it was so bad. I wondered if Lee Patet could sleep last night. It was just uh, awful cinematography. Yeah, it was just yeah. everything was bad about it. Bad about it. Everything yeah. was bad. Yeah, so uh, I won that one. Okay, then we looked at a 996 Porsche, the 2003 with some mods and the 4 liter from your buddies up at uh, oh my God, uh, Max RPM. RPM. Yeah, Max it wasn't RPM actually Motorsport. He, uh, Alex built the car, but he motor. did not own yeah. the car or right. built the motor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they get credit for the motor. Uh, cool car by all accounts. Uh, JP, I said 25. You uh, bet the over, which was what made sense. This car actually did creep up a little bit, but it stalled and sold at $23,500. JP, guess who won that one? And then uh, yeah, we looked at, yeah. we looked at you the, um, you the 1980 Jeep CJ7 Renegade. Uh, this was interesting because you and I had covered this car uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, when we looked at it on the show, it was around the teens. <laughs> and uh, um, after the show, somebody had accidentally bid it up to like almost $30,000. And there it stalled. And the the buyer did not mean to bid that high. And so somehow Bring a Trailer allowed them out of the transaction. And this car came back to market. So we reviewed it again uh, to kind of help the seller out and talk about these mistakes that, that are human errors. It's just the way it goes. Uh, in any case, I said 25 you were a little more conservative and said 24, but we were both all over this car because the car sold for $25,000. I actually guessed this one on the nose. That's a Boom. Yahtzee. That's Boom. a Yahtzee. And, and, and dominance uh, herein ensues. Okay, and then yes. we looked at a, a cool car on P Car Market, a 2005 Porsche Carrera S. Um, again, it, it, P Car Market, it, it's just weird. JP, when we review a car with them in the morning, a car can have four bids or seven mm. bids. This car had like six bids. It was at like $28,000. So I jumped up to 40. You jumped up to 38. 10 grand more. I was 12 grand more. This car went right past us and sold for $44,000, which is all the money for one of these things. Yep. Uh, P car market uh, continues to impress. So keep up the good work there, guys. Um, they if you are guys definitely are, stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys are wearing polo cologne or Dracon noir, keep splashing it on because the mojo. Whatever they're, yeah. Whatever they're putting in the water in Long Island. In Long Island. Yeah. So, yeah. Seems to be working. Oh, my God. Jesus. Jesus Louise. Uh, anyways, beautiful studio. Do you see their studio, JP? Beautiful it's, studio. It's very, yeah. It's very, yeah. <laughs> um, then the 1997 Porsche 991C4S. 993 C4S. 911 C4S. I can't even read my own right. Bring a trailer. Okay. Uh, this was Heidi's car in San Francisco who had reached out to me uh, about the car a year ago. And uh, and obviously everything changed in my life. It was devastated. We came home to San Francisco, blah, blah, blah. I won't bore you with the details, but 
uh, we had, I had sort of cautioned her that if her car made it up to the 80 to $85,000 range, that was in the neighborhood of fair value for her low mile, but small ding and a small mark on her, uh, what do you call it? Carfax. Uh, but by all accounts, this silver on black, less than 50,000 mile C4S is in tip top mechanical condition. Cosmetically, it just looks like a car that spent 31,000 miles or about 10 plus years in San Francisco. It's not perfect, but it's still really nice. The BAT community rallied around her when people knocked her for bringing the car to market with the ding still in the quarter panel. Uh, and I'm very proud uh, that the BAT community, happy that they did that, that they defended her. So with all that in mind, JP and I, you guys, we both shot for the moon. I said, this car could make it to 97,000. You said 95,000. And when I, I still think this is the biggest testament to what we're doing. This bid came in. It was sold for $96,299 right between our two bids. I did win it, but we were both all over it. And congratulations to Heidi. I think you did really well. You got all the money for your car, all things considered. So there you go. Fantastic car, too, yeah. Yeah, really great car. Well, okay, so that was yesterday's cars. Um, you know, that's the thing. What we do is we pick uh, we pick a, a handful of cars every day, and we go over them, and this is what we mean by nerding out. Uh, oh, yeah. We've got uh, some pretty darn amazing cars, starting with <laughs> a new auction site today uh, yep. that we really haven't talked about a whole lot. We've only really kind of talked about them once. One car. Yeah, yeah that, Hemming's that. Auction has a kind of an interesting lot. Uh, it's actually two cars. So one. weird. One, yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, let's talk about this thing. Yeah. So what we're looking at, uh, somebody found in Southern California two consecutive VIN DeLoreans that are both largely unused. The high mile one has one thousand six hundred and twenty three miles on the odometer. The low mile one, JP, this is delivery miles. It's got fourteen miles on the car. Um, so what happened was, as DeLorean got into his financial trouble. Um, uh, I think a lot of his stuff was seized by the government and, and there it remained for a couple of years. And so they had an auction to auction off a bunch of his cars. And so this, uh, this one guy, uh, Ford dealer went and bought a bunch of them. And then he, uh, he bought, I think he bought like the whole lot of whatever available cars. And then he took out this ad of which there is a copy of. Uh, and what he's he's calling them 1983 DeLoreans, but I think by all accounts they're 81s. Uh, and where the list price had been thirty four thousand dollars for these cars, he was offering brand new DeLoreans two years later for thirteen thousand dollars off sticker and selling them for twenty one thousand dollars. So um, these two cars have been transacted through this, and whoever the buyer was never registered them in his name, and then put them in a warehouse in Southern California. Allegedly, the 14-mile car had been used as a parts car, so there may be some pieces missing. I did not read the entire ad, um, but these cars just sat. And so as they come to market with consecutive VINs and basically delivery miles, neither one of these cars has ever been road registered. They're considered on the manufacturer certificate of origin. The, the, they call it the MSO, uh, meaning that whoever buys these cars, if you register and plate them, you will be the first registered owner of either of these two cars, which makes it really neat. Now, I think JP will agree with me. We think that um, uh, in some way, we think that uh, Hemmings has made a mistake by allowing the seller to sell these cars to together. I would strongly suggest that if they had split these cars apart, they would get a retail number for both. Um, and retail should be over $65,000 each car. In other words, top of the market for one of these is 65000 and that 1,600-mile car should get it. The 14-mile car, uh, JP could come really close to being what they paid for that Johnny Carson car that we saw a couple of uh, months ago. Uh, this could be an eighty-five dollars to $100,000 car because it's just basically – brand spanking new um and so here we are although there's still seven hours to go these two cars together on a single lot are i think are languishing at just forty six thousand dollars now the only other car we covered on hemmings was that defender pickup truck the 101 uh, uh wheelbase platform pickup truck that had been restored and i think you and i came in in around the 30s and that car brought like over 40 or something ridiculous it brought a full retail number we know hemmings as a magazine and a classified 
has an incredibly huge audience. And so it is possible that the, the buyer, the correct buyer for these for this particularly strange lot of two brand new DeLoreans could be waiting in the wings. But he's going to somebody has to fight him to get the drive the price on this lot up to where it should be at retail. So we're talking we need two or three people that think that this is the holy grail of, of DeLorean finds. Um, but somehow, if you add up 165, I don't see these two lots bringing even 150,000. In fact, I wonder if they'll struggle to bring 100 collectively when they should be close to their individually. So I think it's a mistake. Hemming should have insisted that they split this lot up. But anyway, that's my only bash on this. Otherwise, what an incredible discovery. Well, look, if you're watching this, you're seeing the pictures. And uh, I'm trying to show you guys more pictures, but Hemming's... Um Boy, Hemmings, uh, their yeah. user interface is really awful, so it's hard to show you all the photos. And let me tell you, if you're listening to this, the way Michael has described these cars, they do sound, it does sound amazing. I mean, 14 miles and what, 1,100 miles or something like that? 1,600, I mean, yeah, yeah. 1,600 miles, whatever. I mean, delivery miles on these two cars. They don't look it. Looking at no. the photos, these cars look like they have 214,000 miles. I mean, no. I'm not kidding. They look roached out. If you came across either one of these cars on the road, you would just be like, oh man, this poor DeLorean. The plastics bowed, the, the, there's corrosion underneath, there's dents, there's all kinds of... You're like, what the hell happened to these poor cars? Uh, they no, were put so somewhere, crazy. but they weren't left alone. You know, someone... If they were in a barn or a warehouse or whatever, there was horses in there or something that was like <laughs> bumping into them. I mean, these cars are at the 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 DeLorean and Back to the Future Three when they pulled it out of the uh, the mine after sitting there for a hundred years looked better than either of these. Um, Isn't that these funny? look terrible. Um, um, and on top of that, Hemmings, come on! If you're gonna if you want to pull big money for cars, I mean, how do these guys not know this, Michael? These guys have been right. in the business for so long. The photos are atrocious. These are yeah. snapshots with a bad iPhone with people standing around the background and shadows and all this stuff. You yeah. have these two amazing cars. You're trying yeah. to get six figures or more for them. Why the hell aren't they yeah. hiring a photographer? What's going on well, here, Deep? And, how, are they, what, how could what, they possibly and, miss like this? And listen, Hemi sent you an email and they CC'd every important department head at Hemings, of which there are many. How yeah. come somebody didn't send a, a press release on this lot <clears throat> to like Jalopnik or something, or just release one to the Associated Press that yeah. two brand new DeLoreans have been discovered in a barn in Southern California? I mean, like, my God, Disney should buy these cars. I mean, good grief. And they could afford to put them back together. But instead, we happened upon them because they asked us to look at their thing. Yeah. It, it's just, this is a missed opportunity. Even if and I hate to say this, but even if Barrett Jackson or Meekum had this, they would they would spend thousands of dollars on marketing these cars that you could yeah. go back to the future with these two brand new cars. Uh, I as mean, the they, consecutive as number be. thing is amazing. Oh, it's, it's not just, just two ridiculous. low mileage Delariums; it's one after the other. Oh um, my god. Crazy. Yeah, I just, uh, Hemmings, you guys, if you want to compete in this world, I mean, I know you guys are the big boys in auctions, but if you're going to play the digital game, you got to get somebody to play the digital image for you because this is <laughs> embarrassing for you guys. Look, literally, I, no, just, disc- you know, uh, what is it? Uh, transparency here. Yeah. I photograph cars. I make films about cars. Give the yep. bid nerds a call. We'll come down there on the next big lot and we'll properly make films about oh your cars. Gosh. And I mean, cause this is the kind of car that would get press. This is the kind of lot that if Absolutely. somebody, if there was a film on YouTube that said, Hey, two DeLoreans, one after the other barn find, everyone would be like, Oh my God. That's bananas. Incredible. Yeah. And speaking of bananas, we, we would take pictures with like empty beer cans and banana peels. Right. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what the, the flex capacitor worked on? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Fusion, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So anyways, JD, there's 21 bids. There's 10 hours left. The cars are sitting at $46,000. And it says reserve met. The light is green, which is just incredible. They are giving away these cars. Um, again, uh, if Well, they hold on. Do you think, I mean, these cars need a lot of work? I mean, just look, I mean. Them. One of the low mile one was was allegedly stripped for parts, and the photos show that there are all kinds of pieces missing off mm-hmm. of that car. So one is essentially a parts car for the other. So even though it should be two individual lots, you're really buying a a running car or a, or a potentially working car and its parts car counterpart, um, which is just crazy that the 14 mile car is the donor car. I, I just it's a head scratcher. The fact that the fact that you could buy two brand new cars 
uh, and and not only and put less than two thousand miles on one of them and need a parts car is well, yeah, it's not knows? exactly a testament to the Delorean quality <clears throat> in the first place, but whatever. Yeah, okay, where I, are these going to land, my man? I don't I, even. Know. I don't know. I don't either. I, I so I last night I wrote uh, what did I write? The Deloreans. There they are. I wrote eighty six thousand dollars, and oh. I am not feeling that bid at all. So, um. Oh, I'm just gonna flip it around, JP. I'll go sixty-eight thousand dollars, and I still think I'm high, but uh, I just feel like there's got to be an audience that, that is gonna be like, "This is unbelievable." Well, you're gonna have to be high to buy these two things. Um, uh, yeah. I'm thinking, uh, where's it at right now? Forty what? Forty-six. Yeah, I'll With say f- seven I'll, hours to go. I'll say fifty-six. Just okay. There you go. Yeah, I should have said fifty-five because that would have been like. 1955 from Back to the Future, but yeah, <laughs> I totally screwed that up. All right, 56,000. Well done. 56 All right, good, it is. good save. All right, JP. As interesting a lot as that is, I, I think you're gonna one up my uh, <laughs> my, my DeLoreans with the yeah. freaking school bus. It's a Crown Super Coach. The uh, yes, 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 it it is an A779-11 school bus. Um, mm, not the dash the, 10. Oh man. The, well, nobody wants one of these. I thought ab- everybody just wants a dash 10. Ab- yeah. But dash 11s, they, they, all the upgrades on the 11s were way better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are once again, talking out of our rear end. Cause oh, I don't think God. an a dash 11, we don't know if a dash 10 exists just for yes. the record. Don't, so don't be like, don't, don't send us messages going, no, the a 10 isn't nearly as good as a 11. We don't know. We made it up. Yeah. We don't yeah, know yeah. if there's an a 10. More importantly, we don't care. So here's yeah. the deal. And then there's that. Uh, this car was put into service by the Oxnard Uniford School District down in Southern California, but the car remains in California and is offered true mileage unknown out of Menlo Park, which is here in the Bay Area, JP. It has a 7-liter Detroit diesel, which is to say that is an amazing motor. I am sure that that motor powered everything that long uh, back in the um, uh, 60s and 70s. I mean, the, the Detroit diesel motors are legendary. Uh interesting to note the car has been repainted but it doesn't it's no longer a school bus on the inside jp if you can hurry along those yeah. photos um they put a, a flat screen tv in there i think there's like air conditioning and a cooler and there's a like a bose sound system and i don't know what the intention was but what they're calling it is a bus museum i i, I just don't understand what they're saying but what is interesting is if that that space is emptied out and you've got a tv and some speakers in there then by all accounts um maybe green day bought this remember when green day mm. first became a band they they toured the country on a, on a retired school bus this looks like a party space i picture this at burning man not uh, yeah. in front of a public school coachella um, so, or something yeah like that. totally yeah. it's real interesting like space that i imagine you could rent for events or take people on tours where they could likely you know drink and listen to music and carry on and socialize um and it, and move around inside the coach but in any case it's it's cause medically and mechanically refurbished uh it's been sort of repurposed uh and it's got great eyeball because it looks like it's from that era it's uh it's really neat thing so jp you're gonna laugh uh last night it was on 17 bids at seven thousand six hundred dollars and i put my bid at ten thousand bucks i was like yeah somebody will pay 10 grand for it. it's totally refurbished what a deal uh overnight this car got a bunch of bids and it's sitting now with five and a half hours to go it's sitting on, let me read it to you, JP, 22 bids at $11,000, which means my bid from last night's already been blown out of the water. So nice. what do you think of this thing? It's really cool, actually. I, I All I want is for Mikey Hashtags, uh, our good uh-huh. friend Mikey P, to buy it so he can roll his dirtbag 914. Like to take, <laughs> get rid of that, that TV and put a ramp so he could just yep. roll the 914 into the back of this bus tour wherever the heck he wants to go and just roll the roll the 914 out of the back i think that yeah. would be the proper thing that to would do be amazing bus, or right? or you open up where this where the school bags go and mm-hmm. you slide it in be, under the wheelbase like maybe it would fit under there that yeah would, that's entirely might, possible might yeah possible that'd be really cool i know mikey hashtag yep. would actually rock the school bus and make it yep. cool like if mikey yep. showed up with the school bus with this smile everybody'd be like oh yeah maybe i should buy a school bus because that guy mm-hmm. looks happy mm-hmm. which is what could mikey you imagine Imagine a loof to cult. Uh, you're absolutely right. With Mikey rolling up in this oh school bus God. and then rolling totally. the 914 out of it. Come uh, on, man. Of, 
man. Oh, man. Yeah, people. Come on. Mind. And that black roof, JP, I wonder if this thing is, it, is there's no pictures of that coming off, but I wonder if there's like a sunroof to this thing where it's I open. Know, in the middle. Right? I was Doesn't it look like a soft top? It does, and yeah. you can certainly do it. You know, Yellowstone, they would buy retired school buses and just chop the roof off them and take people on tours hmm. through Yellowstone so you could just look up at the trees and the oh, mountains yeah, that's a great at idea. Old Faithful. Um, and so that's a thing, you know, where you, uh, decapitating school buses for touring uh where you want to look up at things uh yeah. is a real thing in in uh, our country's history so i don't know that could be a potential candidate in some manner i the possibilities are endless uh the only problem is where are you gonna park it <laughs> my God. you know i mean that's the great thing about living in vegas we got lots of sand just park it oh out my sand. god yeah just yeah. put it out to pasture there you all, go. Right, all right so where yeah there you go see the nine you could just roll right in there I have to reassess. Clearly, there's action on this car. Clearly, mm -hmm. there's value in it um, beyond uh, the novelty. Uh, so 10,000 isn't going to cut it. Mm -mm. Um, I still don't think it's going to bring 20. So sitting at 11, I you know, should I, 15 seems conservative. 18 seems too high. I'll go 15. I don't know. I'm really – JP, just tell yeah, me Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take your okay. 18. I'll take your 18 because this there one does go. look pretty darn know. nice. And, I mean, look at how much an RV would cost or, like, a, right. a sprinter van or whatever because yeah. people are taking sprinters and they're making them into cool RV type yeah, things. Yeah, 30 – 30 grand and up, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean you, know. you could uh, you could get this and have so much more room in there. I mean, if you could get this for under 30 and put a – how much would it cost you? 20 grand to put an interior in this thing, and you've got oh. way more room than your typical yeah. – uh, than any Sprinter, and it's way cooler oh, than any normal RV that oh, you go God. down to RV it's land and get the horrible Paisley-looking interior. The Detroit and, diesel and the school bus facade yeah. is what you're paying yeah. for, and those are, those are just money. So, yep. uh, yeah, 15 is probably – Probably conservative. You might get this one, JP. Well done. All uh, right. The school What's bus. What, what a great lot. I know, uh, right? How much okay. one is that? All right. We're going to jump over to Cars and Bids. Say hi to mm. Doug DeMiro for me. Mm. Uh, with four and a half hours to go, he is offering a no-reserve Acura Legend LS Coupe. Uh, this was the final generation of the Legend Coupe. Uh, this car has just 100,000 miles on it. And, and it's, man, talk about era. 1991. This car is black, JP with like light beige like interior and chrome wheels i mean does this mm. car say 1991 just screams it yeah um out of chandler arizona the 3.2 liter v6 drives the front wheels and is run through a four-speed automatic um it's like there was so much potential for the legend as a luxury sport coupe and they just Never, ever fulfilled the sport, in my opinion. I never yeah. jonesed for one, even though they looked like they promised high speed and stability and reliability of Honda with all the luxury accoutrement you get from Europe, but in a, in a reliable package. And yet, eh, nobody ever drove one and said, let's go for a race. I'll, I'll try to keep up with me. That just never happened. Yeah. And so these cars kind of just phased from existence. Uh, they lost their niche. The, the original legend with the box cut fenders, uh, you know, looked like a like a Japanese 944 and yet they just never delivered on the promise. So I don't know, JP, it's interesting that you picked this lot. Uh, I remember, I remember looking at these cars, but never ever wanting one and just thinking, man, why don't they turn up the wick on that? So what, what happened? Yeah. You know, I mean the difference between the, you right, the box fenders of the earlier ones. And then when they went to this style, the reason why I brought this up was, uh, I actually had one of these for a little bit it, back in the day, back in the mm. olden days, oh, I get my crap. <laughs> when we used to buy cars, uh, you know, they used to have a thing called the little nickel in the Northwest. Everybody had like a penny saver or something, you know, they're like these little free classified ads that didn't even have pictures. They were just descriptions. And I remember seeing a guy, this was probably in 95 or 96 and there was an ad for a 91 um legend and these were crossovers there some of the 91s uh were the old body style and some of the 91s were the new body style so there so ah. you so without looking at it you didn't without seeing a picture you didn't know if you were looking at the older one or the younger one now at the time oh this God. was the contemporary looking car right you know this was the current car whereas right. the old one was definitely 80s this was decidedly Definitely 90s so 90s, worth yeah. a lot more money so i went out the price was based on the old one and it was a right. two-door coupe and i was like okay cool you know i'm gonna go check this out and i remember going out there in the middle of the night i had a buddy like i had to get convince a buddy to drive me out in the middle of nowhere 
and uh you know to to go i wanted to be first just in case it yeah. was a new one and sure enough it was when we rolled around the corner i'm oh like my God. you gotta be kidding and the new one these were worth almost twice as much as the other ones so like i wound up buying the car and That's and driving crazy. and that was the first like luxury car i'd ever owned like right. real nice luxury car it was like oh yeah. oh, oh, oh heated seats and everything was good oh my god you know and you know everything else i had always was always some kind of sporty something but this thing was just like oh dang i came up in the world um and i really did uh <laughs> love that car and always have um i would love to find another one in good condition this ad is just atrocious i mean the pictures oh, are man. just awful and uh it really kind of makes me mad that this car isn't represented well uh because so bizarre it like it's in pretty decent shape but it's just hard yeah. to tell 200 horsepower 210 pound foot of torque from a normally aspirated 3.2 liter v6 by all accounts it's a honda and it's reliable but man yeah. what an underachiever to get 200 horsepower from three more than three liters almost three and a half liters where's the vtec bruh yeah like, what's going on i just these cars just never fulfilled on the promise as a sport coupe and they're just coupes and it's just i don't know i i just was always disappointed they they let me down you know the nsx was like a god and this car was like a haha i mean yeah it was a lot but i mean it was kind of like a you know a base six series of the time too i mean those were yeah. lumbering not a lot of power but they were great on the freeway and that's what this was this yeah. had more power than the than the contemporary six i would imagine at the time i yeah. mean uh so i don't know the beautiful car but this one uh where's it gonna land where are we gonna go so here's the thing jp Get this, 26 bids, and it's mm. at $5,454. <laughs> Again, Cars and Bids comes up with the weirdest bid amounts. It's just yeah. cracking me up. Uh, it's a no-reserve auction. Again, out of Chandler, Arizona, only 103,000 miles. Looks to be in fair condition, and it's got a clean bill of health. So, bruh, I don't know. I mean, would it's... It, do you book a car like this? I think the book on this car would probably be terrible uh, because most of them probably aren't this nice, even with 100,000 miles. So I said $7,000. And again, I'm feeling conservative on that bid, but it is cars and bids. What, where, where, what, do you, what can you possibly expect from this lot? I don't know. Worry what you know. I mean, looking at this 7, video, 000. the car looks way better than it does in the photos. Like yeah, the photos 7, are so damn bad. This video is like okay, it's not even a well shot video, but it's just like it's evenly exposed, and you can t okay. Um, JP, how yeah. do people? I mean, we should do a video, but how do people photograph a black car in the sun? I mean, what's what, what should well, they be looking for? Don't the golden do it in the sun for starters. Yeah, yeah. The um, golden hour. You're always better. Day. Well, if you don't know how to shoot golden hour, don't bother. Just find shade somewhere and put the car yep. all in shade. Um, yep. or wait for dusk or, or wait for a cloudy day or something like that. Yeah. So you say 7,000 bucks. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm guessing. I think that's it. I mean, it's like, do I go over and under? Um, I'll yeah. go 7,500. I mean, it's pretty Ooh, nice. 100, 103,000 wow. miles, change the wheels. Uh, I mean, that interior is immaculate and that's half the battle on these. So okay. yeah, get rid of the chrome wheels and uh, maybe you got something there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. All right. Okay. Two more lots, JP. And then... I don't know. What are you going to do today? Uh, I'm getting on an airplane. I'm going to come and see you because Let's we found an interesting car in the Bay Area that I'll be driving Ooh. back. John Polnick, <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes, of course yeah. it's a stick. And yeah. it's an SUV. Oh, oh, are you, people are going, are, what? Are you an original member of the Three Pedal Posse or did you join after they came? Oh, no, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a joiner. I didn't yeah. know those guys. Till, the odd thing about the Three Pedal Posse, um, Mauricio and the clan, yeah, half half the guys are down in your area in the Bay Area. Uh, That's the right. Originator Mauricio is up in Seattle, and yeah. my studio in Seattle when I was there for you know ten years when I had my studio sure. there um, was six blocks away from where Mauricio's shop is. And oh, uh, we man, had awesome. lunch at least once a week. Oh, very cool. directly across the street. Yeah, you say yeah. very cool. Except that I never met him. I never knew he was there. I met him at Monterey Car Week. Uh, after I'd already <laughs> moved. Yeah. Well, no. They, and that's they, where I met the professor too. I met them all yeah. at the same time. We met him on oh Dan's drive. That's so um, funny. Oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, and they yeah. named the professor. Didn't they give Ben his, yeah, his moniker? The, the moniker came from I've, them. Yeah. I've heard that story. Yeah. They, they love him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway. All right, cool. All right. I digress. Uh, JP, you and I have been all over some BMW wagon action. Here's another cool one. Um, anyway, 2011 on cars and bids, 2011, 328i sports wagon with a six speed manual, just 83,000 miles on this example. And, uh, JP, leave it right there. Look mm -hmm. at that. Uh, why does that car look cool? Because 
the owner put wheel spacers mm-hmm. on. Look at look at how yeah. beautiful just the wheel spacers give that car a whole like a drastically more sporty look. I love yeah. it. Well, very very well done. Bid nerd approved wheel spacers. Uh, look it up. It will improve everything in your life, uh, <laughs> including the look of your car and yeah. your add on cars and bids. Um, three liter inline six rear wheel drive tasman green metallic beige interior but a black dash uh i still don't think the darker shade of walnut wood uh will get by my partner jp he will turn all over it in just a moment uh Mm. but this car does have a normally aspirated 230 horsepower 200 pound foot of torque all set to just the rear wheels uh this is uh just a really neat car low miles uh and they've been doing well so i'm curious to see again if even one that is um you know, maybe not as aggressive as some of the other ones that you and I have looked at with aluminum and full M sport packages and, uh, you know, aftermarket M three wheels. We saw one that had some stuff. I still think that this car is going to bring more than if it was just a three twenty eight I sedan. And so definitely oh, worth sure. a look. <laughs> um, and, and it's just, again, even the wheel spacers make those wheels look really good on this car. So here you go, JP, this car is offered out of, uh, not too far from where you were, right? Tacoma, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just yeah, South of the go. city. Uh, there this is go. a great car. Yeah. The interior color does not get me excited, unfortunately. Uh, uh, but you know, everything else about uh, the, the interior condition is magnificent. Uh, right? but yeah, the color that, that tan with the, with the wood, luckily you could, you can get kits to replace that wood and put the aluminum nice. on there or make it black or something, anything yeah. other than what it is right now. Um, yeah, it really would. It, now, this is not an XI, right? This is just a regular no, one? No, just a rear-wheel drive. Yeah, baby. which is even more fun because that's the thing. Most of these wind up being XIs, and they just don't drive as well as the manual ones. Or not the manual ones, but the two-wheel drive ones, sorry. Uh, here it is in the snow. I don't know why they're showing it in the snow, given that it's not... <laughs> <laughs> an all-wheel drive car uh you gotta wonder what people are thinking with ads sometimes um, I, I swear like i i don't park this car indoors look here it is covered with snow i'm like uh okay uh, yeah where's this car this. gonna land where's this car gonna land it doesn't snow like this very often in seattle when it does the city just locks up like uh like it's covid in march um all right what uh what's so jp gonna- our car is at twelve thousand again with cars of bids twelve thousand yeah. six hundred and sixty six dollars uh, good job, evil bidder, you. Uh, 18 bids, uh, less than two hours to go. Uh, there is a reserve on this auction. We do not know if it's met. Doug DeMiro, take that into consideration as you revamp your platform to compete mm-hmm. in the emerging competitive space of online auctions. I said 14000 bucks. I think it's going to bring a little more than that. Um, I'm going to go $16,000, JP, and leave it there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. We don't see a lot of really big late stage rallies on cars and bids typically. No. Um, oh, look at that. He's got a box uh, 240 uh, Volvo park next to the thing. Um, our, kind of, our kind of guy. Our kind Get of him guy, on the show. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I'm curious how many owners this car has. Did it mention? Um, uh, no, but while you take your bid, I well, can tell you. because What was your number? Uh, 16? 16,000. Yeah, I'll go 15. I'll bet the under. I think it's just... Three kinda, owners. Yeah, Three owners is, it's a great car, but it's not an M Sport, and uh, no. the color is just not great, so I'm going to no. be a little hard on it. Uh, no, be I agree. Yep. All right. Okay, final car. And JP, this is an absolute gray market uh, uh, special. Uh, it's even in kilometers. We're looking on <laughs> Bring a Trailer, a 1995 Fiat Coupe 16 valve Whoa, turbo. we are? Yeah. Uh, That's sorry. not what I have on the li- on the list. <laughs> so the car that you are looking at, JP, forgive yes. me. I put it. I put it on the master list. So apologize while we do yeah. our house cleaning uh, publicly. Uh, that car closes tomorrow, so I bumped oh. it to tomorrow and picked up a 1995 Fiat on Bring a Trailer. Okay. Um, so if it's possible, you can pull it up. Please do so because this yeah. is an odd looking vehicle. Uh, what is um, it? A Fiat. Just put Fiat in the search box, and it'll be the blue car that comes up. Okay. 1995 Fiat Coupe 16 valve turbo. Uh, this car is offered at a Plain City, Ohio. It has 90,000 kilometers on the odometer, 56,000 miles in translation. Um, Penn and Farina designed this car for Fiat, and Fiat put it on a front wheel drive platform with a two liter 16 valve turbocharged inline four, made into a five speed manual transmission in that incredible electric blue paint um listen pin and farina has designed almost every ferrari you can picture in your mind 
every one of them. And they are an incredible design house. Fiat wanted clearly to do something radical. Um, they have made coupes in the past uh, with Pin and Farina uh, when a lot of Fiat's other cars were just designed in house. And so they went to Pin and Farina. And I just felt, even when this car came out in the early 90s, that this was just so over the top that it <laughs> never was going to work. It's just, Fiat, what in the hell? Like, you were trying too hard. It's so freaking pretentious. The swoopy line that comes out from below the grill goes across the top of the front fender well. There it is. And goes into the door. I don't get it. And there's a matching line that goes across the back uh, rear quarter. Uh, it, it just nothing about this car works. It's uh, It's imbalanced. It's unsightly. It's pretentious. And then the wheels are undersized and they're too close together uh, th this car needs wheel spacers and it needs a larger diameter wheel uh just to begin to untangle this mess to the eyes that the design is so i just thought it'd be really fun because i'm such a huge italian car guy uh here's one that i would just turn all over if you gave it to me i would immediately sell it i i just i have no desire that this car just doesn't do it for me and i love italian cars so uh every once in a while you got to bang on something and i am banging on this just this huge mistake this car was never even a success either uh they're grossly undervalued uh, our car is on some sort of domestic title. I forget what it is. But anyway, JP, what do you think of this thing? Uh, do, love it or leave it? Man, this is just proof that different isn't always better. Uh, right. You're just sometimes people are just screaming. So, oh, we're going to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Yep. No, it's still round, right? You, yeah. You're just, what are you doing? Uh, they got yeah. a little too clever. And that was <laughs> that was something that a lot of car companies did in the 90s. They were trying totally. to, were changing the, you know, it's a new century. And everyone's like, oh, we got to revolutionize everything. Everything's a revolution. It's America with everything always has to be. And I know it was done in Italy, but, you know, America started the whole Doritos aren't good enough. You have to have Doritos extreme. Uh, you have to have Mountain Dew blow up in your face. You have to have bigger, better superlatives. And I just totally. feel like they didn't know where to go. So, well, let's do something. This is better because it's new. Well, not so much. New and no. new don't go together. Horrible, horrible looking car. I have it, no idea what it drives like, but just looking at it, I'm sure it's not. It's hideous. Front wheel right. drive. I do think it has some of its differential, uh, but if it doesn't, it's a yeah. bigger disaster. Uh, Who cares? How much is going to go this, for? What is? Does somebody want this? Does anybody out there want this? I this guy, this I guess. Like this the, guy with the hoodie and the hat. That that guy looks like the kind of person that would drive this thing. Yeah, you could swap the turbo, make some power for this car. But this motor is saved with the Lancia Delta Integrale. I'd way, way rather have the Delta Integrale. Those cars handle uh, yeah. and they're beautiful to the eyes. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Uh, anyways, this car is no reserve, so it's going to sell. It's sitting at $7,000 with four hours to go on just six bids. Um, it's on an Ohio title, so in theory, you could move it over to your state, but uh, it's right at that 25-year mark, so it, it could be very interesting and tricky. Um, I put $9,000. I don't think this car is really going anywhere, so I, you know. anyways, good luck. Yeah, how many bids are on it? Six. It's terrible. No action. No love. I'm going under. Not even from me. I'm yeah, going under. I'm going eight. All right. There you go. Maybe Thousand. maybe Deeb's getting another sweep. Two sweepers in oh, one no a day. All right, guys. There's well, no there way. it is. Your Tuesday edition of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd on the most interesting cars of the day and cars and bids and bring a trailer. We always say they're not necessarily the best cars as proof by this <laughs> Fiat. They are just the most interesting. And one oh. thing you could say about that car is it is interesting. Ugh. Um, oh, in the same way that a pile of turd might be in the middle of your floor. <laughs> okay, so there it is, guys. I am heading to San Francisco uh, right after this episode. So we will see see you from the bay area both of us tomorrow uh yep. that'll be kind of exciting we'll actually be in the same place at the same time to do a show yeah uh, we're, gonna so we're, a, we're gonna have a shootout because this studio is big enough for the two of us now. that's right and i'm the yeah. i'm gonna be the one that's gonna sound horrible because i'm not bringing all this stuff uh so there it is uh we will see you guys tomorrow for a wednesday edition i do we have a guest tomorrow i we might have <laughs> brian i think i gotta oh that'd be awesome <laughs> uh brian mcqueen from dwa so that'll be, be uh, all kind of, tomorrow tune in for the Havoc. dumpster fire that tomorrow will definitely Havoc. be uh yes uh so uh safe travels everybody out there and uh bid early bid often bid nerd your daily nerd on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer see you tomorrow get those yeah. nerds nerds